Uh, so our last speaker is Elizabeth Eggert. She is the uh, UN Red Program's Gender Specialist based at UNDP, and uh, she leads the program's gender work. Elizabeth is going to tell us how the UN Red Program has supported partner countries and stakeholders in integrating gender into climate forest finance initiatives with examples from Colombia, Nigeria, and Vietnam. Elizabeth, the, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Amanda, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Firstly, can everyone hear me okay? Clear, very clear. Perfect, perfect, thanks so much. Um, I just wanna say, uh, first, it's uh, great to be engaging with everyone here on this important issue, um, and to have already heard from some colleagues here on some of the innovative approaches, um, which have illustrated how gender can be effectively integrated into the climate forest finance. Um, so just quickly, before highlighting some of the examples that Amanda noted on how the UN Red Program has supported partner countries and stakeholders in integrating gender into this work, I first wanted to just briefly um, provide an overview on UN Red's gender approach and how the program provides gender support to systematically promote gender equality and a human rights-based approach in the work that we do. So firstly, UN Red's gender approach looks to focus beyond going, um, just looking at gender sensitive um, perspective to instead achieving gender responsive policies and through them more effectively promoting forest protection, combating climate change and enhancing local livelihoods. And to do this, the UN Red program integrates gender equality and women's empowerment, not just as a standalone, but also as a cross country um, theme across its theme, various thematic areas. And within the technical support, it provides at local, national, regional and global levels. So in this process, as we see here on this slide, um, the UNRWA program focuses its gender work and support across five core work streams um, to assist state and non-state stakeholders in mainstreaming gender and women's empowerment into Red Plus action. So briefly, these five streams include the following, conducting gender responsive assessments, raising awareness and capacity building on gender equality uh, and women's empowerment concepts, promoting gender responsive participation, undertaking gender responsive planning and monitoring, as well as promoting knowledge management on gender. And so now to illustrate how UN Red implements these streams across its support to UN Red partner countries um, to help ensure that its efforts on forest finance, including the resulting benefits are gender responsive, I will now highlight some key specific examples from UN Red's portfolio of support. So, as we can see here, the first example comes from a community Como based pueden ver aquí, el primer ejemplo viene de uno de los proyectos comunitarios de un río en Nigeria. Para darles un poco de antecedentes, Red Más, con base basado en la comunidad, surgió de una alianza entre el programa UN de ONU Red y el programa de pequeñas subvenciones para cuestiones ambientales que busca dar apoyo a comunidades y pueblos indígenas para empoderarlos en actividades relacionadas con Red Más y ay ayudarlos para desarrollar experiencias, lecciones y recomendaciones a nivel local que después pudiera servir para procesos nacionales de Red Más. Siguiente, por favor. help support the integration of gender into this work. In the case of Nigeria, its country plan included gender-related outputs, gender requirements among criteria um, for project selection, as well as gender targets and indicators. And as a result, key selected projects supported women and youth on eco-agricultural practices, as well as sustainable livelihood enterprises. And as you can see here, um, here are some examples on some of the impact on this work on women's livelihoods. Um, and somebody just wanna highlight some noteworthy um, results. So first, um, um, the work provided semi-mechanized equipment that created time savings for women. Um, the women were also trained on sustainable harvesting methods and they were involved in decision-making processes on the community forestry plan. Um, there was um, increased uh, income generating activities for women, as well as there was a community recognition um, and support from women that had actually been approved upon. 
Now, while these gender-related results for women from this project are great to showcase, it's also key to highlight that doing so promo also promotes more successful forest management and Red Plus action. And this is exactly what a community leader that was involved in this project um, noted. Um, he, he was quoted as saying, we have learned that successful forest management will be better for us when there is social cohesion, political will, and protective livelihoods. And he noted that we've developed a community forest plan with bylaws and we have started to regenerate degraded forest sites, improve the livelihoods for women, and also improve the value chain for cocoa, the major, major driver for forest loss. So um, I wanted to highlight one other, another example, and this one now comes from some uh, community forest management support that we conducted in Colombia. Um, Jessica, next slide, please. So, Firstly, a bit of background on this work. Um, it was done with the La Cristalina Initiative in Colombia, and it was um, undertaken in partnership with Colombia's uh, Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, as well as with the European Union to promote community forest management in eight subregions in the country. Uh, next slide, please, Jessica. So, and to ensure that this support equitably involved and benefit, including financially, women and men, and reflected both their needs and priorities, a gender approach was mainstream within it. Um, and following the work streams of the UN Red approach, we can see here that first a baseline data, um, uh, baseline data was collected, um, and this data revealed that within and within the La Cristalina initiative that all representatives of households were men at the, at the, at the baseline conditions. Almost 65% of households um, and within households decisions were made by men and not women. And no women attended community forestry meetings. So in response to this, the projects um, in support with and in collaboration with the um, community leader, they built the capacity of women on the project they undertook gender responsive stakeholder engagement activities to ensure that 50% of those involved in forest inventory activities were actually women, as well as ensure that women were, it, were um, part of the forestry committee and were assisting in the management of the initiative's monetary fund. And what's, what's interesting about um, some of these key results is that now, starting with the baseline of having no women participate, women now make up 34% of the attendees within decision-making processes. Also, through consistent consensus, it was decided that 20% of the income generated from the project activities will go to the Women's Committee of La Cristalina because of the role they actually played in all the implementation activities. So this actually goes to show that when women are, are, women are fully engaged in the process, those involved in decision-making processes, including both women and men, often see the value that women bring to the table within a project. And there's this need to ensure that they also receive some of its benefits and that's crucial. Um, and so this also illustrates the need to make sure that women are just not beneficiaries but are involved throughout the project implementation as well as decision-making as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna show one more example with the one last minute I have. Um, and this one comes from the uh, uh, phase two of Vietnam's uh, UN Red program. And um, this illustrates how efforts to develop markets and partnerships in Lao Cai province for natural forest-based economic models can um, support the active participation of women. Next slide, please, Jessica. So really, really, really briefly, just to highlight that in this work, public-private partnerships were piloted between the provincial government and ethnic minority communities. And under this work, traditional medicines managed and harvested according to indigenous knowledge um, are being sold by local women to partner companies that provide the market access that the women previously had lacked. And in this process, the support is also involved um, complementing women's knowledge with training on sustainable harvesting techniques to help as well as help them set up cooperatives at the commune level um, comprised of women involved in the harvesting, uh, harvesting of uh, the plants. So for local women who are dependent on the forest for their income, these partnerships have had a significant impact on their livelihoods through one, increasing their incomes and two, securing a viable future for both their traditional knowledge as well as the sustainable use of forest. 
And it just quickly goes to highlight the valuable traditional knowledge of women and ethnic minorities and how they can be powerfully leveraged um, in the care and stewardship of forests and Red Plus action. Um, so, and it actually shows that we can then scale this up to operate at a more influential scale to, talk, to achieve this more transformational change that we've been talking about today. So with that, I will stop and thank you so much. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. It's, it's really great to have these concrete examples of, of how gender responsive finance can, can impact on the ground. Um, 